Welcome everyone back to Pommy and Oz. Hope you're all doing really well. If you're new around here, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. It really does help the channel out. Can't thank you enough for your support. And we're here today to talk about finally what feels like for eternity, a Carlton win. Carlton coming out 99 points to 34, winning by 65 at the Optus Stadium over in Perth. Happy hunting ground for the Blues, it has to be said, recent years. It's almost like a home game for them. And they came into this game with... It has to be said, a lot stacked against them. Um, what felt like a million outs uh, ended up being six outs. Six new faces, three of them actually brand new. Uh, Moya and Lord making debut. Bins technically a debut. He's played a quarter. Lewis Young returned. Corey Durden and, and Jack Carroll. Carlton missing and big players needing to win this game to keep their destiny in their own hands. And they did just that. Um, a tale of really two halves for me. The first quarter I thought was really, really interesting watching the Blues. It was a classic case of being real tentative from the start. And it was interesting that both of their goals came from defensive half turnovers uh, and Cowton's from their forward half turnovers. And we were really dominant. We ended up managing to go into that game quarter 16-14. But when you watch that game back, and I've watched it three times now because I've had to do some of these stats manually because uh, the source code has died at the RN. But to a couple of behinds, and it was really that classic 12-5 to five marks inside 50 in the first four minutes. And the Blues ended up not really kicking anything from it in that first half, especially that first portion of that first half. If you remember it, the Blues really were dominant and they ended up kicking goals, which really kills me. You know, when you watch Cowan, like we had that Brody Kemp and that Blake Akers chance and then they kicked two quick goals and before you know it, the Blues are behind the eight ball. And that's one thing that the Blues have really got to be wary of moving forward. When they are tentative, they get some early chances, particularly around their clearance. They were really, really strong around their clearance at the start of the game. And they start to get a little bit of an edge around stoppage. Um, they did West Coast. And then before you know it, they're slingshotting out of the back from Carlton's hard work. They weren't at the fall of the ball in that first quarter. And luckily, the Blues managed to pull it back at the end to go in 16-40. But then the second quarter came... And the Blues were really front and centre, really hitting their targets. The inside 50s coming in, the Blues being at the front, fall of the ball, front and centre, putting that pressure on, and the territory started to go up. And once that started to go up, what happens? Well, we know what happens. When Cowton starts to put that pressure on, it's really, really understated that when the Blues are putting that kind of levels of intensity on, it pushes teams back like we fall back. And when teams fall back... There is all that space to exploit. And I think a really good example of this is what we're going to look at here. So if we just take a look at this. So this really exempl exemplifies what the Blues are about around stoppage. Look, they've played the loose man there, Newman, who didn't get it. But look at this. Because they're putting so much pressure on, the deepest player is Darling. And the space in behind, as you can see. And all it takes is this overlap run. And then from here now, the Blues are out. And this is why we like that long kick when it's just one-on-ones. And look at the overlap run. See there, Motlop, Motlop and Newman backed Cripper to win that ball. And then the handball comes through and the Blues are really out of here, look. And a little bit of patience, a little bit of time, and it's an easy goal. And this was what showcased the Blues this week. Their ability to make West Coast not commit too many players forward, especially from the midfield. And this is what Carlton have been doing really badly over the last couple of weeks. Their midfield has sat back because they don't trust the forwards to put the pressure on. And then they've come really far back and the forwards have committed back. And then there's no outlet ball on the way back. And it was a real nice evenly balanced. And it's got to be accredited here that Holland's bins were absolutely superb with Elijah floating up the other flank of keeping their width and giving Cow an outlet ball. And this is king when you're playing the good sides. It has to be said, West Coast are where West Coast are for a reason. But 
like I said in my preview, you've got to beat up on them. I don't care about the outs. You've got to beat up on them. And this was a welcome return to form. They have to do this tenfold against other opposition. But all in all, it was a good, good a good tune-up fight for battles yet to come. Now, let's look at the numbers, sir. These numbers here, we've taken ages. We have really, really gone into detail here. We have tried to get this. Um, we've watched it two times, just doing this really slow, and they do check out. I got a, a good mate of mine, big big Paul, um, down in Bendigo to have a look at this to uh, make sure that I'm not going high. So, Cowan got 51 points from stoppage versus three from them, an improvement of 23 and a negative 32.8, just the three behinds coming from stoppage. And how did the Blues do this? Well, Ching Cotter was that quarterback behind the ball. What that did is it allowed Cowan to stop the run. West Coast four players through there, such as Tim Kelly, and particularly Harley Reid makes that direct run, almost like Chad Warner, um, and Jamie Cripps in them forward half stoppages, and Ching Cotter was there. This is a return to when we used to play Boyd there, but you also saw in that pa passage of play Nick Newman doing it. Nick Newman just hanging back and looking for that outlet ball. What Nick Newman did quite a lot of the times is he'd get the handball feed out from Hewitt or Cripps, which was used to be Walsh, which put him in trouble, but then Walsh would run alongside him. A lot more secure and a lot better for Walsh because then he's out in space, he can chip kick and set it up. And the turnover game from the Blues was astronomical. Plus six, but where it usually is at 49, and the defence was back to his best. And that's because they didn't sit back. The Blues have been sitting far too back and almost inviting the pressure onto them. But this time, against the opposition, they really wore them down and were more bold. And that's OK against 16th, but you've got to be bold against the top teams. And it's really interesting that Voss has really changed this makeup since the Sydney loss. And I don't mind the Sydney loss. That was the way we played. We were outsmarted. We were outskilled. You've got to keep your system going. And this was a welcome return to form. Cooper Lord was sensational on turnover defence because of his short spurt speed, and that really helped out. Defensive half, we talked about this. They're very strong pre-game when we talked about them, their ability to stop you in the channels, and we managed to negate that quite well, being about where we are, 22, just down by two, but we really stifled them down by almost 20. The forward half, though, this is where the Blues put a lot of effort in at the start of the year, and particularly last year. This was Voss year two. Stoppage was Voss year one. Three, four, year two was forward half, and year three has been turnover, and this was great. 20 tackles inside there. There was never any space. And the centre bounce, a real welcome return to form. Playing Cooper Lord in there really helped Cowan to really look a little bit more, more secure, definitely defensively, but definitely looking to overlap. There was some concerns for me in the fourth quarter with our, with our centre bounce, particularly the way that we allow someone just to slide out the back of it which could be negated by Hewitt playing more the attacking side. That is going to be a really interesting facet for the Blues moving forward. I did really like, though, that the fact that Cowan really put time into Cripps, Hewitt and Walsh in this area. But Cooper Lord taking that 40%. He really did look supreme when he was in there. And when Walsh was away from that, that's where the Blues look really secure. Not saying Sam Walsh isn't a good player. He is. He's an absolute phenom when he's in there. But the best versions of Sam Walsh we've seen are around when he's that 40% in there. So I think next week I would love to see Cooper Lord get that 60. Walsh there. Walsh was really effective when he was away from there. And that was a real welcome return to form for the Blues. Up next, the battle of the ground, the pressure acts. As we said, pressure acts are usually a sign you're in trouble. The Blues 20 down, but so effective because the tackles is the point of difference. Remember, we always say this. Pressure acts have to be tackles. The fact the Blues out tackled a side that spent all day chasing is a credit to them because it means you're finding uncontested ball, but it also means that you're finding space to work within. And that is a real testament to what the Blues were doing. Because they used to sit back the last couple of six weeks, 
They haven't been in position. They've been in position to pressure, but they haven't been in position to tackle. So you couldn't swarm them. This is imperative against St. Kilda next week. They have to really learn from this and make sure that they're at the races. And the tackles inside 50, plus 14. We said pre-game, West Coast will come hard at Carlton, tackling inside 50, and they did. But the Blues match that, and the ability there is it stops the ball movement out of the back half, it stops them setting up. All the top teams that Carlton will play, should they make finals, and this week coming against St Kilda, know how to get the ball from the back half of the ground to the front half very quickly. St Kilda this week, 67 points from the back half of the ground. 67 points from the back half of the ground. So the Blues have got to make sure that this is there again. Then this is a key. Territory battle, 6,105 to 5,350. Sensational from the Blues. Kick, chase. This is why Voss likes this. It hides a lot of our deficiencies. It makes us look a lot more fast. It makes us look a lot more dynamic. And it is incredibly useful when your wingers keep their width. It gives them easy outlet balls. And we'll see what I mean by that when we come to the final slide. But Mags inside 50, the Blues, ironically... The best have been for a while. They really have got really good there. They've managed to get that really solid. And the fact that our bat line didn't change, allowing Wheatering to be more free playing centre half back as opposed to full back, was phenomenal. Chin Cotter was a real big part of this as well because they tried to free up Jamie Cripps and he killed it with two one on one wins going at 100%. Goals inside 50. This is where Cowan need to be. Back to that upper echelon here, going at 26.9%, 5% higher than usual. And their ability to make West Coast kick long, not them down to 10%. It is worth noting that they didn't really play any opposition, the Blues, but they did what they had to do with a young side. The confidence here and the benchmark is here. In the fourth quarter, I'd like to go a little bit harder, but... The signs here was well hard work, and it's going to be really, we're going to know a lot about these boys next week when they come up against opposition that are really up for the fight. Scores inside 50, really good, 48%. The Blues really dominated this area. And managing to rebound a staggering 90% of the time. This really did showcase with Ollie Hollands playing that halfback role almost. His ability to link up with players is probably one of the best in our team. And it was really interesting to see Chin Cotter and Ollie Hollands play that Boyd role between them. It provided a lot more defensive output, but it also provided a lot more run and stun because Chin Cotter is far faster than Boyd, but also Ollie Hollands is very canny and his ability to two-way run dragged players out of position, particularly their zones. And that really helped with our forward entries, the way Kennedy... And Mr. Kemp played. Kemp going almost goal square to the middle of the 50. And Kennedy starting from the goal square and going out towards the pockets. Really split the zones really well. Particularly with Binsey, Akers and Hollands keeping their width. The intercept marks, plus six for them. The Carlton were a bit loose with their entries, particularly the second half at times. They didn't really drill it in in the first quarter particularly and the fourth quarter, but the middle portion, second and third, they were really good. This is an area the Blues have to improve and really load test this system. It'll be interesting next week should one of the Tolls return because I think the option there is to keep doing this, playing a bit low to the ground and really getting it to work. It suits our game style. One-on-one -on -one loss, Carlton improving by 19.3. Remember, negative numbers are good here. That's the best they've had all year. Only 10% of one-on-ones lost versus 25. Again, the Blues really did help them out with some of the loose ones. Obviously, remember... Obviously, it's worth remembering that Carlton had the smallest forward line they've ever used. But this is pretty impressive what the Blues managed to do just by hemming them back. And the contested possession's a little bit up, but what I liked about these contested possessions up is that next screen, metres gained per disposal. They were looking to take contact and handball in it. That has been the success with the new rules at the moment. Teams that are willing to take the game on and really look to take them small little wins and risk getting caught holding the ball and are staggering almost a metre more for them, which means Carlton pushed them back. 
all in all, it was a really good win. Some real highlights there from the young players. We've seen a couple there. I do want to just show you this before we wrap up. I just want to watch this with you guys and girls. But if you see this, this is an area here where the Blues just had a bit of a lapse towards the end. And I just want you to watch what Harley Reid does. And this has really been little a point here. You see he starts to make contact there and look he creates the separation and loses him in the inside 50. And that has been something that the Blues have really struggled with this year. When teams just engage that contact and lose them around stoppage. And that is something we're going to have to watch because that was the one thing that went wrong, particularly around Santa Clarence and stoppage. Players just getting lost because they're so worried about the defensive side. There, what I would love to see Lidge do is attack the ball. And that's what they did in the second quarter. And that's something that I like Lidge's point of difference. But that's one area there when Cowton get resourceful and they start to play Crips and Walsh there. Something he's real guilty of. But that happened a few times in the fourth, just as the Blues started to switch off a little bit. But all in all, positive performance against weak opposition. It matters not in the part, apart from what the result is next week. But they've got the tune-up fight. Everything went their way. The confidence is high. Please, Vossi, don't change it too much. Just bring one tall in. One tall in because Kemp was sensational. And Kemp's ability to lead off the back shoulder like he did in juniors was really apparent. Real happy with that performance. Hopefully this is the end of us negativeness. negativeness. We learned a lot in that game. Go Blues, pop out. Rolling up over black Cadillac, high heel boots and a sexy body full of tats. Baby's bad.